is finding myself. So during my younger years, um, the answer to the question of who is Stephanie Chun was really simple. I was born into a very traditional Chinese family. Um, I was the oldest of two kids. I had a younger brother. And it was my duty to make sure to watch over him and teach him things and, and uh, make sure that he was safe. My dad worked at a stable job. He was a pharmacist at a hospital. And my mom was a stay-at-home mom. So basically, I lived a pretty mundane, simple, predictable life in a sleepy, small East Bay town. So knowing that what was expected of me, after all, I was a six of seven grandchildren and had five other cousins that were older and that I looked up to. All of my cousins studied and excelled in school. They were standout leaders at their school. The boys would play, uh, were proficient athletic athletes who played tennis and basketball. And the girls were um, played piano and practiced ballet, and they were just always dressed to a T. So every Saturday, my family would get together, and we'd have a weekly dinner where all the kids would get dressed up. We'd go and see our aunts and uncles and grandparents and talk to them about what we'd been doing during the week and what we'd been, um, all of our extracurricular achievements. Um, my path was pretty pre predestined at that time. Um, I had good role models to follow, and uh, basically it was to get straight A's in school, to be become a ballet or piano protege, to um, attend college on a scholarship, to become a doctor and lawyer, to get married, to have a nice big house, and to um, have two kids, a boy and a girl. <laughs> All I had to do according to my parents, was to follow this blueprint that was placed in front of me. And money, success, and happiness would be mine. So I managed to follow this outline for some time. And of course, I was young. And I was taking ballet lessons, working hard on my schoolwork, um, running, uh, running for office and winning student council positions. In short, I was trying to mimic my cousins and be the perfect oldest child to please my family and my parents. But after a few years, it got tiring, and my heart yearned to do some other things and try new things out, explore new activities. And I realized I wasn't happy. So push came to shove one spring Saturday, and it was time for me to go to my weekly ballet lesson. I was tired of ballet, and I'd been telling my parents that I didn't enjoy it, that I wasn't even good at it, I'd always trip up, and they'd put me in the back. But they wanted me to participate anyways. They poo-pooed my request and basically said that maybe I'd like it if I tried harder and that I, I wanted to be like my cousins, didn't I? I wanted to be exactly like them. <laughs> what I hadn't told my parents was that I had actually started secretly playing soccer in the schoolyard with the boys <laughs> at school. And of course, because I had to wear a skirt, be dressed nice, I, I made sure to put my shorts on so that it wouldn't flash anyone or anything. <laughs> but um, I had actually become pretty good at it. I enjoyed playing the sport. Um, I liked the fact that it was exciting and dirty and that I liked at the end of recess I was sweaty and exhausted and feel like I had accomplished something. I especially liked the fact that I was able, I was quick enough and fast enough to steal the ball away from some of the boys who would say, oh, you girls can't play, girls can't play soccer, and that I'd never be good. Realizing that soccer games were on Saturdays, I calculated and figured, hey, I can't do ba ballet and soccer at the same time. So I decided that I would have to make a plan to, to, end, to make an end to ballet, pink tutus and, and shoes just forever. So knowing um, the schedule routine of how the dance studio worked, my teacher would always ask for a check at the beginning of the month and we'd have to pay her for the rest of the classes. So I decided that since my parents never attended my lessons, and they'd drop me off at my cousin's house, I would take the check, put it in my bag, and not pay the teacher. So the month had passed, and the next month had come up, and my teacher hadn't said anything. I hadn't paid her. And so she asked me why they didn't get the check, and I said, oh, my parents must have just forgotten. So I asked the teacher, well, if, if we didn't pay for lessons, I can stop going, right? And to that, she said, oh, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it, You know, I'll talk to your parents. The next month went by, and I just knew that my plan wasn't working and I had to make it work. So I told my teacher that, uh, again, hid my, my parents' check, 
And after half, after a couple weeks, they called my parents in and called me in and asked me about um, my dance lessons and why I had been paying for it. My parents were pretty embarrassed because they didn't know what I was doing, and uh, they apologized profusely to the teacher and then asked me in front of her why I had not given her the checks. Um, I pulled out the checks from my bag, all three of them, and I told my parents that they hadn't been listening to me, that I really didn't want to play, that I really didn't want to participate in ballet, that I was terrible, and that this was the only way that I thought that they would actually listen to me. Um, I apologized to the teacher for them because that was that was embarrassing, but I told them that I really wanted to play soccer and that I'd gotten really good at it and it was something that I wanted to try, even though none of my cousins um, and family had. had accepted that as an acceptable sport and activity. Surprisingly to me, they turned to me and looked at me and said, well, Steph, if that's really what you want to do, we support you. So in the end, um, I learned a valuable lesson and that you can gain happiness if you follow your heart and you're true to yourself and that you don't always comply with what is expected of you. Um, of course, being my personality, I ended up teaching my parents a couple more lessons as I <laughs> went through life. Um, some of them were good and some of them were bad. But in the end, I think my parents um, have now learned to accept who I am and um, are happy that I, I'm happy and ended up happy that how I turned out and um, being true to myself. So in the end, um, it all worked out and hopefully if you ask my parents, they would say that, that they uh, are happy with who I am. Thank you. Thank you.